there is a, an ideological civil war happening, black people that are focused on their past and shouting about slavery, and black people that are focused on their futures, okay? I can guarantee you what you're seeing happening is victim mentality versus victor mentality. Victim mentality is not cool. I don't know why people like being oppressed. It's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. I love oppression. We're oppressed. 400 years of slavery, Jim Crow, which by the way, none of you guys lived through. Your grandparents didn't. It's embarrassing that you utilize, you utilize their history. You're not living through anything right now. You're overly privileged American. The truth is that the left wants to strap black people to this idea that they are victims. That's what it comes down to. They do not want black people focused on their futures. They want black people focused on their past. They like black people to be government dependent. They don't like to see black people that are free thinkers and are independent. And I think that's what Kanye West and myself represent. This is a tremendous time to be alive as a black American. We've been existing under this facade, these lies the Democrats have orchestrated because they consider us a, a low information voter market, you know, and they so they think we're not going to research the stats and we'll never find out. I hate the race card. It's played every election year. Every four years, the Democrats rally to get the African-American vote and we give it to them because, well, Republicans are racist, right? We usher them straight into the White House where they immediately forget about all of the promises that they made to us. For so long, they have told us that because there was a black president, this meant progress. Progress is not a skin tone. Progress is a number, okay? And for so long, we've been convinced, look, he's taking a photo op with Beyonce and Jay-Z. That means absolutely nothing. Chicago got worse while Obama was in office and he came from there. It's just the truth. It's what I've been preaching about long before Kanye wrote this seven word tweet that broke the internet is that they at once they enslaved our bodies the democratic party but say they have enslaved our minds i was a liberal and i can tell you exactly why it has to do with the educational system we learn our history wrong we learn that lbj was the greatest president for black america and that couldn't be more false i mean what he did essentially enslaved us the democratic party i love the way candace owens thinks Red Pill Black, ladies and gentlemen, is the YouTube site for now. They're trying to ban her. Candace Owens is here, who the establishment is demonizing, because this is the future. The people now have a voice. The people now all have their own TV network. And it's game over for the arrogant people at MSNBC, CNN, and even Fox trying to stop this revolution has gotten watered down and lost half their ratings. Don't they get it? You're not going to stop progress. I, I think that they are starting to get it because, as you said, they're losing and they keep losing and they can't stop losing. And it's an exciting time to be alive. And I encourage everybody out there, get your voice out there. Don't be scared to say whatever you're thinking. Uh, nobody can stop you. Well, I'm just impressed uh, with all the work you're doing and the fact that you didn't give up when they banned your videos, blocked your videos. You fought back. They had to restore them. So many people quit. No, no, you never quit. They're just trying to wear you out. And now there's about to be antitrust hearings. Trump's appointing a guy to the Federal Trade Commission that wants to go after Google. I mean, it's on. Good. I'm so excited to hear about Google because they are really doing the most evil work behind the scenes. And Facebook, too. They were, you know, totally promoting that article. If you search for me on Facebook, that salon hit. The new face of the toxic right. The new face of the toxic right. It had 20 shares. I had videos that had a hundred, average 100,000 shares every time just one person puts it on their platform on Facebook. And that was what was coming up. This well, Google, Google admits article. their whole algorithm's fake now. Right. Yeah, they admit it. So I mean, you type in <laughs> vaccine damage, you get 20 pages of BS saying no, there's no danger in vaccines when the inserts say they can kill you. Yeah, absolutely. And it all just changed the last year. I mean, Google's extincted itself. Jeff Bezos, another character that is completely evil. If you're thinking it, him buying Whole Foods upsets me. It's just, they just keep acquiring more and more and more and more. And people have to sit and they have to think deeply about the implications of these people controlling everything from your food to your media to your Google. Jeff Bezos is on Twitter, Google, uh, he's uh, Whole Foods, Amazon. It's just, these are things that we have to really think about to understand the globalist environment and how we can break out of it. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited about taking you and your uh, crew uh, to dinner tonight. Uh, so during the break, before we get the next guest on, I want to thank you for coming on. Absolutely. You're going to be on with Owen today. And then and go take a rest or whatever, but but tell me what kind of food you want tonight. We also got you some good Tex-Mex you wanted, so, so that's in there in the conference awesome. room. But uh, I just really look forward to taking you to dinner, and I hope you can be a contributor with InfoWars. I don't watch a lot of Fox, but I do watch some of Hannity and some of Tucker, but I like the you know, morning show. Tucker's got the best faces. Yeah, yeah, he does. He, he does. I, you know, I wish all those folks would come on and debate me. They won't do it. Maybe if, if we give you a show or... Or if you're gracious enough to do one with us, uh, then maybe you can get them on. Maybe it's like less threatening, though. I think you're probably more intellectual uh, uh, than I am.
Um, thank you. I appreciate that compliment. I'm going to accept it. But I'm not just saying it. I mean, you're just, you just lay it all out so ladylike, but also it's good stuff. Yeah, that's what I try, I try to do. I try to, you know, I don't, I keep it really PG and I try to keep it honest. So thank you so much for supporting me and for having me here. What are they going to do as it comes out? Bombshell, Podesta worked with the same Ukrainians as Manafort. And when it turns out both Podesta brothers got tens of millions of dollars from the Russians with Hillary to transfer the uranium, something we broke a year and a half ago. And, and, and that they have the Russian connections, not us. No wonder they did this, just like Roger Stone said a year and a half ago. They blamed us for what they've done. Right. But hypocrisy is, is their middle name. You know what I mean? They don't care. They, they can get caught doing the things over and over again. And they can be caught red-handed as they have been done over and over again. And they don't care. They double down on their ignorance time and time again. And honestly, it's, it's just... Um, it's getting boring at this point. But you know? that's the stunt. Just they just like boring. parrots on every channel say Russia, 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 Russia. When <laughs> when the FBI, former FBI head Mueller, was the bag man for uranium and in companies getting millions of dollars himself from the Russians, you literally have a guy with the Russian arm up his rear end puppeting him. He's a sock puppet. Then claiming the people that aren't are the Russian agents. Right. And that's what they do. That is what they do. Well, you know, this is going to be all over the news. This is going to be everywhere. Like proof, they yelled at him and said he was a Russian. And this is what they do to me. It's so pathetic. Right. They said that yesterday about me, you know, that I'm uh, somehow a spy. I mean, they turn things, they anything that's a threat to them, they try to control the narrative. That's you because the they're narrative. the outsiders. Yeah. They're the globalists. Yeah. I'm ranting. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. They are the globalists, and that is exactly true. And they're losing power. So what we're seeing is kind of like a psychosis, you know? And they don't know what to do. They're losing power. They've been in power for so long. And a new media is emerging, and they are not in control of it. What does it mean when a girl can flip over her laptop and get millions of views, that it can be circulated 80 million views on Facebook, dubs in Portuguese and in French, which means we're not just hitting an American sentiment. It's a worldwide sentiment that we're being lied to. Their time is running up. It's, it's a great time to be lying. I'm, I'm personally excited about it. When you got Kanye West, I don't care what people think. People don't think. I like him more than I, now that I know he liked Trump. That's why they literally grabbed him and threw him for a week in a mental institution when he started tweeting that he liked Trump. I am. That's the he went to visit Trump and they threw him in a mental institution. <laughs> I am the biggest. I've always been the biggest supporter of Kanye West, not just because I followed his music and I knew as soon as Trump came out, I, I wrote on my Facebook page, Kanye's going to come out supporting Trump because all he promotes is individualism. Everything that he does is against globalists, and people didn't understand that moment when he took the trophy from Taylor. Swift. It was actually because she didn't deserve the award and she got it because they were trying to appease people. So his Oh, well, they fix all those awards. And that's what he was saying. And now I get it. You get it? And, and everyone, now I get that I was buying into their too. propaganda myself because right. I don't really pay attention to pop stuff. Right, right. And I listen to his music, so I understood what he was saying. Why am I here? If this is all puppetry, why am I here? Why did I show up? We all know she didn't deserve this award and she didn't. Um, and he never went along with her narrative and he has died on the cross time and time again as an expression um, to be able to say that. To be well, literally, to he he has no criminal record, nothing, no. No, no mental problems. He goes and visits Trump. A week later, they throw him in a, in a mental institution for a week till he's able to get himself out. You know, the saddest part to me with How all How long was that, he in? Three, four days? I, I think it was about a week. And the saddest part to me was just that the black community, he has been so inspiring for all of us. And it was sad to see them that easily manipulated and saying, oh, well, you know, Connie just must be going crazy because he supports Trump. It's, it's all insanity and it's getting more insane. And I'm just hoping that with my voice added to the mix, people can start to wake up. And it makes me happy that you say, yeah, I had Kanye West wrong because at various times we've all bought into the propaganda. You know, and that's why I try to approach things with sympathy when I go and I meet with uh, liberals and I speak to them. I try to say, listen, I was one of you. I was, I was one of you a year and a half ago. So, um, and you were elements of you were, you know, it's everyone buys into their narrative at some point, but we are waking up, we are stronger together. And as long as we have each other's backs, the globalists are gonna lose. I feel very strongly about that. One of the least racist places you'll be is at a real tea party or a Trump rally. There's still some racists there on, on, on both sides, but. I mean, it's just the experience. And now that people have broken through that wall, and the media said tea parties, racists don't go to it. As more minorities actually go, they're finding out all the love. Right. And that's what's panicking the globalists. Right. And it has been unbelievable. I, I have never seen more love and more kindness. I gave a speech last night at Texas State University to their young conservatives than when I meet other conservatives and I show up and I speak to them. Woo! They're awesome. They're We're going to awesome. be back. We're winning. We're on the march. <laughs> the empire's on the run. <laughs> If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Over 20 years ago, 
Alex Jones created the media platform called InfoWars, and in the decades since, it's grown into a truly remarkable institution with over 200 radio affiliates, tens of millions of unique website visitors monthly, and a 24-7 live news TV channel broadcasting from state-of-the-art studios in Austin, Texas. InfoWars has become the most trusted independent news source in the country dedicated to delivering breaking news, live coverage of special events, and exclusive reports you won't find anywhere else. While the old guard media struggles to maintain supremacy in a landscape brought by innovation and technology, InfoWars has been at the forefront of the information revolution. From 8 million radio listeners, over 2 million YouTube subscribers, or the billions of views of our online content, InfoWars proves dominant in every facet of media we enter. For the hardest hitting reports, uncompromising analysis, for high profile interviews and bombshell revelations, accept no substitutes. Demand truth. Demand InfoWars. InfoWars. Tomorrow's news today. I can guarantee you what you're seeing happening is victim mentality versus victor mentality. Victim mentality is not cool. I don't know why people like being oppressed. It's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. I love oppression. We're oppressed. 400 years of slavery, Jim Crow, which by the way, none of you guys lived through. Your grandparents didn't. It's embarrassing. Vote for us. We love black people. Wait a second. Didn't you say that four years ago? Uh I mean, yeah, but you can't vote for the other guys. They're racist. The African-American community is suffering from a poor memory with a healthy spoonful of indoctrination. I mean, from the time that we are in grade school, we are told Democrats, good, Republicans, bad. And we repeat that ad nauseum without ever stopping and just researching. Do you wanna know why Democrats who own the media are working so tirelessly to tell you that if you ever vote against them, you are going to be waking up one day with Klansmen surrounding you? Because if they lost even 25% of the African-American vote, they would be in deep trouble. All of their globalist efforts would die. Seriously. In fact, that's why they're working overtime to also marginalize other groups like transgender people and gay people. They are scaring everybody at every corner. The mission is simple, guys. Divide and conquer. Red Pill Black follower there, Red Pill Black on YouTube. Millie Weaver has an idea uh, to start... Uh, you know, kind of like the five, but but not have it be just five people, but I think five women. And, and, and I think somebody like you could probably anchor that. Right. Yeah, there definitely needs to be a new media and, and women definitely need to have a platform, a true platform, not being told what to say um, by producers that have an incentive. Well, I know that's what I want to watch. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I'm a guy and it's not just watching girls because they look nice. I kind of just get sick of guys. You yeah. Know? So it's, it's fun to see women's perspectives. Absolutely. And it's an exciting time to be alive. And I encourage everybody out there, get your voice out there. Don't be scared to say whatever you're thinking. Uh, nobody can stop you. Harvey Weinstein, Eminem, plus a P. Diddy solution to NFL protesting. My name is Candace Owens, and you are watching my vlog series, The Myth of the Coon. Man, life comes at you fast, Hollywood. It's like one minute you're up there singing and tap dancing, mocking everyone from your moral high ground, and the next minute, bam! The world discovers that you've been covering up for a serial rapist. America voted for a misogynist, said every actor and actress everywhere. Just after they had got finished smooching up to Harvey Weinstein, we know celebrities, this is different. If we've learned one thing from your undying support of Woody Allen and the Clintons, it's that rape is totally fine, so long as it's financed by globalists. Thank you, Hillary, for being a constant beacon of strength, hope, and determination for me and millions of other young women. You've been a role model and an inspiration and a voice of reason in uncertain times. Sniffle. The point is that I was really hoping that Bill Clinton, a rapist, would be in the White House. You taught us that woman can be raped so long as it's by your husband. This is me holding my breath for Stephen Colbert to pen a musical number on the horrible actions of Harvey Weinstein. Also holding my breath for a newly organized women's march with 2.0 pussy hat designs. Okay, can I at least get a Kimmel cry? Come on, Jimmy. You cried for Cecil the Lion. You can at least squeeze one out for Weinstein victims. Uh. 
thinks Jimbo. And speaking of men who disrespect women and are somehow celebrated in Hollywood, have you heard Eminem's new diss track? Personally, as a former fan, I was a little disappointed. After years of hearing about how you want to rape and kill your ex-wife and even your mom, calling Trump and Steve Bannon racist felt a little PG, like Eminem on a diet. Sugar-free shady. In fact, the only people that should be offended by Eminem's diss track is CNN, because plagiarism is a no-no. Racism, racism, religion. Racism, racism. If you want to see the full video, it's got about three minutes left. It's powerful. It's gone viral. It's Harvey Weinstein, Eminem, and Why the Left Can't Stop Losing by Candace Owens, known as Red Pill Black on Twitter and on YouTube. And she's been censored. She's been blocked. She's gone through a lot but fought back, and they've had to back off. They just want to wear us out and get us to quit. Uh, but, Candace, I want you to tell about your story first, because you were already viral before Paul kind of you know got you on his show. Now you've been all over Fox News. I've seen you everywhere uh, just doing an amazing job. But, Paul, uh, introducing how the left goes around intimidating YouTube personalities that they see as successful, bullying them into joining their cult. Uh, just like when young college students get to college, they say, get in here to the dorm. The racists are out there. The KKK's on campus. Let us indoctrinate you before you go outdoors. They're burning crosses. They did this in a cyber way to her. Introduce Candace Owens for folks. Oh, I mean, Alex, there's nothing more dangerous to, to the left than a, a young, well-educated, intelligent, black conservative woman. Nothing more. That's like kryptonite to them, which is why they came after her immediately after she started getting a lot of attention, you know, back a couple of months ago. Also now with Candice, there's a, a big uh, hit campaign against her, which is taking something she did like over a year ago, this social autopsy website, and saying that that's what she's now planning, even though that was before her whole red pill mo moment. Total ignorance. They don't even know where she came from. They haven't even watched a single interview of hers, obviously. So now, that again, they're trying to hit her on that. So whatever this uh, young lady's doing, she's definitely well, putting, putting the I'll, fright into I'll tell you what they're doing. They just want to confuse everything to get her off balance and think she needs to respond to it. She just needs to respond once and she's done and move forward with how they are losing and how they are pathetic. Uh, Paul Watson, thank you so much for joining us, my friend, and thank you for bringing this young lady to my attention. Thank you, Paul. All right, thanks, guys. Take care. There he goes. Oh, wow, thanks for coming into town. I'm so happy to be here. Great to have you. Uh, you're even more impressive in person. It's, it's, it's uh, wonderful to have you. Where should you start in the few months we've got to break? I think you should recap right. what the feminist cult tried to do to you. Uh, you know, in your own words, they just thought basically you're a woman. Uh, you're reportedly, you know, supposedly a minority, uh, and then you, so you belong to them. Right, um, absolutely. So long story short, I was creating, I considered myself a Democrat and a liberal about a year and a half ago as Trump was kind of rising up. Um, I, can, I was trying to build a product called Social Autopsy, which uh, Paul just mentioned. And essentially, I thought I was creating something that was going to help stomp out bullying. The... My passion behind it was well intended, but it was totally naive and not something that now I know that I shouldn't have done. And while I was doing that product, um, I was contacted by these, you know, self proclaimed feminists and they basically tried to take me out. The same women that were saying that they were being attacked by anonymous trolls on the internet were telling me that they didn't want to figure out who these anonymous trolls were. Um, and long story short, I figured out that these girls were harassing themselves, that it was all a lie and that there was no movement of white male conservatives that were stalking and harassing these girls. And when I made that statement, the left media came after me and tried to smear me. I was literally force fed the red pill, which is why I can call myself red pill black. You wake up one day and everything that you thought was real was a lie. I felt like I was being kicked down the rabbit hole. And um, it was incredibly psychologically challenging to go through, to be honest. And then a year later, I said, I'm in this. I'm, I'm jumping in this and I'm going to be involved and I'm going to speak up because everything Trump is saying is true about the media. And I flipped up my laptop and two videos went viral. And it's because I was tapping into a subconscious. People are tired. And now you've reached hundreds you. of millions of people. Yeah. And now I've, I've seen them demonize you on control corporate media. But yeah. I, I've, I've seen you on Fox News. Yeah. And so now, I mean, let me guess, you walk down the street, 
Do, do you run into more fans than haters? Oh, absolutely. And especially, I, there's such a, a movement happening. Even when I was in LA, I was shocked to see that there's this young conservative movement that is happening. And they're so optimistic and they're so happy. And of course, I do get some detractors and some haters, but that is to be expected. I named my series The Myth of the Coon, fully understanding that that was going to be the first thing that they called me. Um, and all I can do is encourage people to be smart and be vigilant because the lies are going to keep coming. We saw that yesterday, which Paul mentioned. They said that I was like a government show and that I was secretly going to go back and start to dox children. Complete lie, fabrication, but that is what they're trying to do. Turn conservative. Well, that's all they've got. People know the mainstream media, they are hitmen, okay? They go after certain people, they are paid to go after certain people, and they are paid to keep certain people in power. And unfortunately, with the rise of Donald Trump, they've lost and they keep on losing. I'm, I fully believe what Steve Bannon said that if he runs again in 2020, his, he's going to win by a way way wider margin because people are waking up day by day and I get so many inboxes on Facebook flooded by black people. Thank you so much. I knew something was up. I'm, I'm feeling inspired. I feel encouraged um, to come out and say what I believe in. You know, I knew this was shady on campus and that I feel like I'm being lied to. So it is happening. The movement has started and is not going to well, stop. When you talk about a re-education camp in 2010, it, it leaked and they, they said, no, it's a real document that Jones got. How did he get it? And the army's response was a few months later, just to release it. It was a field manual for internment. And it talks about social security numbers, how to process Americans. So it's for here and overseas. And it says we're going to put people in re-education camps that don't go with the collectivist model during the collapse. Because they were planning an engineered collapse under Hillary. Wow. And that's the authoritarian communist term is re-education camp. But when you look at a re-education camp, it's where you get a bunch of people in a sports stadium. Those that submit get taken care of. Those that don't get beat up and attacked. It's a peer pressure thing. And it's about getting you to denounce yourself as bad, getting you to also rat other people out. Well, that's what colleges, high schools, and businesses are now. Right. It's basically Maoist-style re-education camps. And people get off the bus. You pay to send them to college. They get off and they, they're scared and they, and they bring them in, the professors bring them in, scare the hell out of them, especially minorities, and induct them into a cult right then. And they were doing that cyber-wise with you, but you got wise to it and now are a major titan against them. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. And we are back live, now entering the fourth hour of my daily transmission. It is the second day of May 2018. I'm your host, Alex Jones. If you just watched the last 30 minutes, you saw Candace Owens in studio, but back in what, December of 2017. Now, let me explain something here, why I did this. I don't chase Hollywood. I don't chase stars. I don't chase all that. Our audience hates it. I don't like it either. We're about building something outside the system, poor base in Texas. We're about pointing out how it's been used to control us. But when Kanye West comes out and has the courage to go against the system and to call for free thinking and gets demonized, I get excited. And I remember Candace Owens talking about how much she admired Kanye West and how she wanted to work with him and how she dreamed to do that at dinner and on the streets of Austin and on my show and Owens' show and you name it. So I said, hey, we ought to re-air that old interview in a couple days, and they said, what's well, crazy, we watched it, it's all about what's happening now, and awakening and challenging the system. So I said, yeah, let's air it. And then I thought last night, I went, wait a minute, let's doll it up and add some of the new clips and stuff and not say it's new, we're not gonna deceive our audience, just say Candace Owens coming up on the show. And I even said, I bet Thought Police like Ben Shapiro, whose job is to take over the conservative movement and kind of pseudo liberalize it with more elitism, more foppish behavior. I said, I bet somebody like him and others jump on it and say, don't come on the show. So we'll start saying that morning she's going to be on, which she was in this very studio, in an old interview, edited into new interviews, and it'll cause a big hubbub, and it'll be about free speech. Now, here's another thing. Four months, five months went by like 10 seconds. I'm like, why is it Candace been back on? She's big in the news. I want to hear her take. But we're not chasing the tail of a story. That's not how you get a big story. You break stories. We've had hundreds and hundreds of top news cycle stories. I mean, we're in, they attack us thousands of times a week everywhere. It's great to be infamous. It's like I'm the heel in professional wrestling, but this is for real. The globalists are pissed. But I start text messenger. They call her, shouldn't call back. Paul, I know, who 
didn't put her on the map. She's really smart, really beautiful. She deserves to be there, has a lot of courage. The feminists were bullying her, trying to mind control her. Paul said, this woman's incredible. Started getting her on. And she's exploded. That's all I wanted to see. Was somebody that deserved to be big. But then there's the thing where you circle back around and you're like, hey, come on the show. You get ignored. So Paul called her and texted her. She said, well, I'm just really busy. I'll come on Thursday. That was last week. Well, I'll come on Monday. Then no call. And that's when I decided Monday. I said, you know, let's just re-air it. And then I thought yesterday, let's do it this way. To then get Candace's attention. But everybody else is that I don't live and die by having Candace Owens on the show. InfoWars, Paul Watson, with our huge audience, pushed her over the top to get recognized and get what she deserved and needed. Just like Matt Drudge has helped push us. It'd be like if I told Matt Drudge someday, I won't talk to you or you can't link to my stories. He'd be like, okay, you're mentally ill. It's a chicken or the egg. I'm the chicken. She's the egg. And she needs to know that, that she's a chicken now. She's going to have many eggs of her own. But it does hurt your feelings when you try to invite somebody back on nicely and, whoa, you work with Fox News, you're in the Fox Club, you're in the... You know, Republican student movement, they're like, oh, that's not safe. We brought Trump. The populist movement brought Trump. We brought 1776. We have the tens of millions of viewers and listeners a day. We're the ones under attack. But it isn't like we're chasing after Fox News. I'll never forget when they had Fox News say, Jones wants a show here, but we don't want him. Fox News offered me three shows. I wouldn't even go audition for him. It's a lie. I'm bigger than Limbaugh, you name it. The only thing bigger is Matt Drudge, and I'm not having a pissing contest. So I love seeing Candace all up there on TV, great outfits, hair done all up like she deserves, being treated like a princess. That's real progress. That's real power. So I thought this is how we'll get her attention, where we can get in the news with you, Candace, anytime you want. we want if, 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 if you think you're going to get attacked coming on here. But that's what she said in a tweet back to the thought police officer Shapiro. She said this respecting any platform watched by millions is silly talking about infowars please stop telling me and or kanye no or can't or shouldn't advice appreciated commands shut down and this really exposed the fake right-wing thought police like that snot-nosed arrogant creature ben shapiro